Hey guys, Josh with Navigate the Wild. Today I'm gonna show you how to butcher a whole ham. Hams are the back legs of an animal. You get two of them, unless you're a really bad shot. And that's where the majority of your steaks are gonna come from, your grind uh, scrap is gonna come from, your stew meat's gonna come from. Let me first off by starting this video with a disclaimer. I am not a trained butcher. I kind of wish I was, but I wanted to understand the beginning and end process of hunting. The end process of hunting right before the meal is the butcher process. Now I know a lot of guys in their towns, especially North Carolina, Georgia, South Carolina, all those states, they bring their deer to a processor and that's awesome. It's awesome that if you can do that, I don't have anybody near me that does that but I also wanted to understand the process and I wanted to know how to do it myself. It was a big part of what I do and I wanted to learn. It took me a few years to feel confident in doing it. Um, I don't know all the names of the cuts or anything like that, but I'm gonna take this thing from a whole ham leg, back ham leg, and we're gonna break it down into multiple meat groups and then we're going to also keep the bone for bone broth. And so what I do is when I get home and I get the quarters off, so I take the neck off, the back straps, the tenderloins, the organs I'm gonna keep, and then we get the front shoulders and the back hams. We're gonna do a ham and a shoulder today. We're gonna to start with the ham. I immediately from being skinned and taken off the animal, I put it in one of these bins and I cover it with an Argali game bag, okay? And then this goes into my fridge. This has been in my fridge since last Saturday, so for five days and I flip it so it can dry out. And what happens is there's benefits to keeping meat on the bone and age, allowing the, the rigor mortis process to set in, and then you start to take it off the bone. You're gonna see that you can see these lines a lot cleaner than if you were to just have to butcher it in the field. And if you have to do that, you have to do that. I've done that, okay? But because time is on my side, I let this age for about five to six days. I clean it off and then it allows the muscles to tighten. It allows some of the moisture to be released. We're left with a much nicer product in my opinion. Okay, so let's take off our Argali game bag and all I do is set it on there. Okay, so this is dirty, it's gotta be cleaned. But as you can see here, we're left with a shoulder and a ham. Hams are bigger than the shoulders, at least in the animals here in Florida. So we're gonna start with a ham. Now, this is dry. It's nice and firm. It smells perfect. There's no stench to it. Few hairs that we'll pull off before we start butchering, but it's relatively clean. And you can start to see all these lines. These lines are gonna guide you. Um, the one thing I like about hogs over deer is deer has silver skin. They don't necessarily have fat that you would want to consume. Silver skin gets waxy. It's really not palatable. It doesn't taste good. And so you have to take time cutting all that stuff off. With pigs, not so. And so I'm gonna show you, once we get up in here and we start to remove this, I'm gonna make little incisions. I'm actually gonna allow my hands to do the majority of the work to begin with. And then you're just gonna see as these seams break open, it, it explains itself really well on how this comes apart. And so we're just gonna take it off muscle by muscle. So I've made my first few incisions. They're small, just enough for me to get my fingers in between the muscles and I just start moving this stuff apart, creating space. I like to try to keep all the muscle groups together and I really don't like cutting into stuff that I would normally keep whole. So we're just removing this upper flap here, separating the lower portion of the ham to the upper portion of the ham and creating space. Little by little, I take my time, there's no need to rush. It's a 
chilled piece of meat. I usually keep these in my fridge between 34 and 32 degrees as long as it sits in there. And so we don't have any fear of spoilage or anything like that as it ages. We're peeling it back, exposing the meat a little more. And along the way, I'm checking to see if there's any type of growths or anything like that. Sometimes game meat, deer, and pig down here have these little growth fatty deposits. If you see that, you cut it off, you throw it away. You do not want to uh, bite into that. So as we continue to take these pieces off the bone, I'm taking this flexed blade and I'm running it down the bone just right around the side getting it all off the bone. I'll break it down even further once everything is off but I like to have everything off and I know what you might be thinking especially if you're new to this. Josh this looks like just a hunk a lump of meat. I don't know what the heck to do here. I know it looks like that from the video but it's really not. You're gonna have cuts that are very defined um, they're going to be very clear on what you can make out of them, whether it be a steak or a loin or it's a football roast that I break down into cube steaks. It's all there, and we'll get to that. But what I'm doing is I'm taking it off the bone right now. I'm going to work it up along that ball joint that I told you about, and we're just going to take the rest of the meat off. There it is. Now we've got this calf muscle here. And you could break this down into asabuco, you could roast it on the bone really slow in tomato sauce, and all those fibrous tissues would break down. I recently found out that the pond that I fish has catfish in it, so I'm actually reserving some of this for catfish fishing, and the bone will be saved for bone broth. We're going to just cube this up, put it off to the side for when we go fishing. I always call this a football roast. It's perfectly in the form of a football in my opinion. Usually has a little flap of skin on it, a little bit of meat on it, but you slowly cut that off, peel it off, and you'll be left with this just perfectly round piece of muscle. I usually trim off the ends, the ends go into the scrap pile, and then a lot of guys that I know will either take both of them off of a uh, off of a deer or a pig and put them right in the crock pot, cook them down in some beer or something like that, and then you've got your pulled pork or your sliders or whatever you want. What I've been doing is turning them into steaks, and so I cut them in nice inch and a half thick sections, and then I pulverize them with a meat tenderizer, but they grill up perfectly. You can also make country fried steak out of them or country fried pork in this case. So we got these really nice pork chops that are boneless and we are just hitting them to tenderize them because game meat can be tough. And so whether I make these into country fried steak or put them on the grill, I just want them to be able to be enjoyed. You don't want to be chewing on a hockey puck. So I take my time, I hit them all, tenderize them all both sides before I freeze them in our vacuum sealer. This next section I get a really nice steak out of, but I like to make it into pork chops or like boneless ribs. I take that flap off and that flap I usually just cut and put into the scrap and then I always like to just trim it up a little bit and I like to make everything uniform. It just might be weird, but um, I like to cut off the pieces that are not uniform. We're going to lay that off to the side and then I'm going to hit these with my meat tenderizer and make sure that when I freeze them, they're all tenderized and really nice. That way you can just put them on the grill, cook them up. So same thing here, we just got some really nice cuts of pork, and these are gonna be great for the grill. Do yourself a favor if you're interested in butchering. Get on YouTube and check out The Bearded Butchers or check out Scott Ree's project. Uh, those the bearded butcher guys are from America. Scott Ree is from uh, Europe, England, 
and these guys get real definitive they're real butchers they know what they're talking about they know all the cuts I'm really just trying to make everything as nice and neat as possible I scallop some of the nicer scrap pieces and I save them for a stew and I save them just to put them in a Dutch oven to have chunks of meat um, the other stuff gets ground into sausage and all that and then flat iron steaks and things like that I grill a lot of meat but it's great for stir fries this has been an awesome addition uh, to the freezer check those guys out and enjoy the rest